Welcome back to Adventure Now in Torsalm. This mightily impressive Danish flagged tool ship is the 1934 George Stag, a training vessel. Today there is something of a challenge built into the sailing curricula and that is a strong breeze blowing her on to the dock. Such a breeze as this makes it difficult for any boat of any size to leave the dock and head out to sea. In this instance, Get your heads down there. the fairly crude use of a 40 horsepower mobile bow thruster seems to be doing the trick. Well, I say doing the trick, and although we can clearly see that this method is effective, to me, there does not seem to be any room for error. And this is not a situation we like to get ourselves into on board Altor. Yes, I know that this ship is so large, and by comparison, Altor is so small. And maybe I am guilty of being an armchair sailor here, but if that rib's single engine was to fail, they would be destined to blow into the pit of doom that is the corner of the dock with all its hard edges and embarrassment. But full praise to you, Skipper, you did it. And I'm fairly sure that after all this hard work at the wheel, you handed over control to your first mate and headed to the bar for a large medicinal stiff one via the toilet. Everyone is winging it, a friend once said to me. You only have to look around, this fact is plain to see. Don't allow your dreams to be suppressed, this simply isn't right. If you have a yearning for adventure inside, go on, step out, take flight. We have heard some people say that the Faroe Islands would be lovely were they not devoid of trees. Well fear not tree huggers because you can do that here too in this beautiful park nestled just above Torsound. Whilst here you can also tip your hat to the legendary St George. The people are so friendly here that you cannot help but make new friends. And soon we were taken off on a road trip to view the brand new tunnel that connects Stramoy and Esteroy and is complete with the world's first subsea roundabout and an incredible art installation. This is an expedition to the mountains in Torshon to celebrate summer solstice. Cut. <laughs> On heading up the mountain, us men decided to split the weight of firewood between us, but Asha called us pussies, put the firewood on her head and climbed up the hillside. On our way to the suitably spectacular location to celebrate the summer solstice, we passed the site of an anemometer that was blown down during a Christmas storm in 2016, its last wind reading 283 kilometers per hour. Now I have stayed up for many summer solstice celebrations, but to be honest, I can't remember a single one of them. But this one, here in the Faroe Islands, is one that we will never ever forget. With the longest day behind us, the time to bid farewell to Torsound after a fantastic time here was upon us. Come in and jump, all clear, uh, no traffic reported at the moment. Thank you very much, Alter out. Yep, thank you. Well, it's all sound. Thank you very much for a lovely couple of weeks. See you again. But it was such an easy stay in Torshavn, because the people were so welcoming and the endless socializing was just happening day after day, so it was really good. It's really cool. Here we are following a long sea voyage from Torsound to Nulsoy, two and a half miles across. A two and a half nautical mile sea voyage sounded good to a couple of sailors that are prone to growing roots. In the safe harbour that is Torsound, it is sometimes easy to forget that you are on a small group of islands that jut so spectacularly up and out of the North Atlantic Ocean. 
Sometimes pointing the bow back outside into the big wide open spaces seems a little daunting. So what better than a short hop across to another lovely island with a small safe harbour. The last time we tried this was Trasillic Gardens, season one. Have a look at what gap you've got there. Plenty. Right, so let's now go on the other gauge. Oh, need a bit of Vaseline. Are you in? I'm in. You're in nicely. Any wriggle room? It seems like a timely opportunity to try it again. So please step forward, Miss Krasuska. <laughs> let's give this a go. Look, this is... Oh, my goodness. So easy. You want to sit beside me? So easy. Stop <laughs> taking the mickey. Okay, that's a pass. We'll find another one in season three. <laughs> See Tor Sound bathed in some early morning sunshine over there. Beautiful. Sailing again, Ashy. Nolsoy in the background. That was an express visit, wasn't it? One night, one hike, one beer, and gone. And now we are bound for Hestor, which is 11 miles away, and we should have the tide and plenty of it all the way. Happy days. I love this back to adventuring around the Faroe Islands thing. Yes. Synchronizing your journey with the tide around these parts is critical. We timed our departure from Nolsoy so we could join the main west going tide as we rounded the corner on the way to our next destination. Starting to pick up some speed here as we come round the corner. Uh, we may have three or four knots of west going tide here. So looking forward to being swept up towards Hestor. The tide is swirling its way westwards. We've got 9.2 knots now. I think we may even pick up a bit more speed. Here we are coming up on Chuskaba. The tide around the Faroe Islands does not suffer falls. Many years ago, the master of a 4,000 tonne steamship decided that he could take a liberty and push around a headland against the tide. As can happen all too often in this pastime that is sailing, first you get the exam and then the lesson. After escaping a critical wind over tide situation, he put into Torsam for repairs, his ship now devoid of funnels and lifeboats. Such is the ferocity of the tide around these parts. The moral of the story for us is to do our homework and get the timing of the tide right. You are very, very welcome. You are welcome into our garden. Our roses want to see you. What a wonderfully poetic welcome to receive on entering a new harbour. Welcome to Hestor. <laughs> Thank you. This is Hestor, and the ferry outside provides a far better demonstration of the tide than my words can. On this perfect Faroese summer day, it was time to have a look around. The island has around 30 houses, but only nine permanent residents. One word. Yes, Asha, beautiful indeed. For the first time since being this far north, we could feel the sunshine tanning our skin. We walked south alongside the steep, luscious, greenest of green slopes, and the only locals we met were the sheep and the bird life. In order to find our perfect spot for a packed lunch, we went up. 
we're on our way. Let's just stop for a rest, thankfully. So I have the excuse of stopping to film her. <laughs> well, I'm a little out of breath because of the terrain. Right, next push, Ashy. Perched on the side of the mountain on Hestor, I reckon this is probably the most special picnic lunch I've ever had. What about Yao? Definitely the <laughs> hill incline is probably, I don't know, 60 degrees. It's pretty cool. It's hard to explain, but we find that the Faroe Islands invigorates us more than any other place has done before. By spending time in this beautiful land, you cannot help but be affected by its scale, its beauty and the friendliness of its people. Of all the lives that we could be living, we know that we are lucky to be living this one. I know that there are troubles that we have to live with on this earth of ours. Sometimes those troubles can surround us like a smog and we feel like we are being suffocated. If you feel like this, then I urge you to get out amongst nature and feel free once again. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode of Adventure Now. We really hope that you have enjoyed it and if so, please stay tuned for more. Altor out. Alien has been dismembered and probably also at what makes you suspect foul play? Because if anything dies, I don't think it explodes. <laughs> you know, this is like a canyon coming down. A canyon. canyon. There is an awesome view here. It's like a canyon. Canyon. It's like a canyon coming down the slope of the hill. It's really fascinating. I'll come and have a look. There's a canyon. That is. <laughs> Ash has found some cock again. Actually, they are hens. What about the things with giblets on their head? Are they? Hens? They are all hens. There is no cock in here, except you. <laughs> <laughs>